All right. Um, welcome to another conversation. Today I want to speak about politics. Friday morning was Friday was a Saturday, right? Um, so in the morning, I have a daughter in high school, and she walks up to the bedroom, knocks, and asks, "Dad." Are we going to school today? And I asked her why. She said, I thought there are political demonstrations in town, in Nairobi. I'm like, yes, uh, but I don't think they're going to come anywhere near where you go to school. She's like, but I thought Nairobi is going to go to a standstill. I told her, no, you know. But the reality, as much as she went to school, I was pensive, I was nervous you know you kept trying to make sure that the structure that takes her to school and back home is okay just in case you know you you you're, you're waiting to be told you can take the children home at lunchtime you know in in the past the times when parents were actually um con having a conversation about whether they actually want to take the children to school and this is a conversation i'm sure was being held everywhere in key towns and cities across the country. Because Raila Odinga has called for public protests. It actually made me very annoyed. And I asked myself, honestly, how, does, how did we get to the point where our politics worries even children in school? That a child in school is wondering whether they're going to go to school because a particular political leader wants to have public protests. And I know Azimio keeps insisting that their protests are peaceful. Um, but at the end of the day, what are we hearing? A petrol station in Kisumu was vandalized. Pumps. You know, I'm assuming that most probably this petrol station was actually closed. Because that's what was happening in Kisumu. Most businesses were closed. So let's assume it was closed. But you, what do you do with a petrol station when you close it? You can't take away with the you can't go with the pumps. So people actually come in and vandalize. Some time back, there was a supermarket in Kisumu that was vandalized. We are getting where where are we going with this conversation? I saw Kalonzo Musioka had um, led his uh, public whatever it is um, in Ukambani, you know, and you can tell. The, 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 there's an attempt and an effort to build a momentum of public agitation against the government. Now, this public agitation, unfortunately, is being sold as being public agitation because the cost of living is high, which is true. Because, um, I mean, cost of living is high. But I ask myself, what is it that the Azimio government would have done if they had gone into office right now that would have lowered the cost of living below what it is right now? It's 11 months since the last election. I wish what Azimio were telling us is had we taken over government, these are the interventions we have, would have done, and right now Unga would have been 100 shillings, Fuel would have been 100 shillings. That's not what they're doing. They're focusing us on the things that are not working while not telling us what alternatives we have that would have implemented that were different. And then they're calling us to the streets to interrupt that living standard even more. Had Raila had his way, Kenya would be like Kisumu. We would have shut down literally every town today. Been Friday. We would have shut down all our businesses. Children would have stayed at home. That is the kind of country he wants us to live in. Where when he's unhappy, he calls people to the street, and we all go to the street, and we stop doing anything else. The question is, to what end? How do we benefit? So let's assume we all go to the street, and we force this government to do away with the finance bill, and then what? Right? What is the alternative that Raila Odinga is offering beyond the chaos 
that he seems so hell-bent in causing in Kenya today. When children start getting scared of you as a politician, uh, you need to realize you are done. You are done. And Raila Odinga is actually done. And it's unfortunate, um, and I know there are people who are his hardliners, but you cannot put a country on the path to self-destruction for your ego or for your political, to show political supremacy. Raila Odinga is a powerful political force. There's absolutely no doubt about it. That he lost by 200,000 votes according to the statistics and the records shows that he's a powerful political voice. But that power brings with it responsibility. And that is what Raila Odinga doesn't have. He is not responsible. He doesn't have feel a sense of responsibility of our country, of our children, of our future, of our institutions. If he did, this is not what he'd be doing. You'd not be calling people to the streets when times are this hard. I have challenged them. They wanted to take over. We wanted, I was part of Azimio, we wanted to take over government 11 months ago. What was our plan? What was our plan for this first year that we can be able to present to the people of Kenya and tell them, had you elected us, this is what your life would be looking like now. This is how it looks now because you elected William Ruto and that is where we have a problem. We are not going to remove William Ruto from power using violence or using protests. It's not going to happen. The only thing that can happen by bringing violence and protests into this politics is that we are going to get into a violent confrontation and it's Kenyans against Kenyans. People were making fun about police officers who had been called out to go and resist the people who were demonstrating. These police officers are paying fuel at 195 shillings. They are buying unga at the same 230 that we're buying it for. Why would you want to put Kenyans into that confrontation? Kenyan to Kenyan. Because this Kenyan who works as a police officer has a job to protect. When he's asked to go to the street, you want him to refuse so that he can get fired. And then he does what? If he comes to the street, he's coming frustrated, just like you. You are making his work hard. So you get into a violent confrontation, and then what? I think this country needs to tell Raila Odinga is enough is enough. We cannot continue like this. Let me, last week I gave an example of these two women in the Bible who each gave birth to babies, went to sleep. One of them slept, lay on her baby, and the baby died. They woke up in the morning, and they both insisted that the baby who was alive was theirs, and the baby who was dead belonged to the other person. When they went to King Solomon, it's a story we know very well, King Solomon made a very simple request. He said, fine, we're going to take the baby who is dead, cut that baby into two, and give each of you half. Then we're going to take the baby who is alive and cut that baby into two and give each of you. So that you, each of you will have half of the baby who is alive and half of the baby who is dead. The mother who's, who knew her baby was dead said, fine, that is wisdom. That is da, 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 da. The, baby, the mother whose baby was alive said, no, let her take this baby. That is what is called moving on in a political contest. We lost the election. The baby is Kenya. We're not going to split this baby and kill the baby so that every person, Ruto and Raila, can have a baby who's dead. This baby is alive. Kenya is alive. Raila wants us to split this baby into two so that he can have his half and Ruto can have his half. But if that happens, Kenya will be dead. And those of us, even those of us who supported him, must now call him out and tell him, you know what, my friend? That election is done. We're not going to kill this baby. We are going to allow Ruto to run and manage this baby. Until 2027. And if by then you still want to run against him, you run against him. But we're not going to kill a baby 11 months after the last election so that you can feel happy. One year after Kibaki took over. If we can remember, this country was running on fumes. 2023, 
That is when corruption was at its peak. That is when we had a guy called Gidongo taping the president as he tried to explain to him how bad things were in the country. That is 2003 when Kibaki took over. The president today, we all say, was the best president we had. But one year into his presidency, things were in shambles. We had ministers telling off Moy and telling him to go and grease his ship. The kind of thing we're seeing happening with people talking to Uhuru. There's nothing new. This has happened before. But Kibaki ended up being the best country this country has had so far, according to all of us, right? When Uhuru got into office in 2013, the first year, nobody even wanted to talk to us. Uhuru was being treated as a paria. He went to the United Kingdom and the Prime Minister of the UK refused to take a photograph with him. That's how bad it was. Uhuru finished 10 years and today, as a Zimio, we are all for Uhuru. Ruto has just started his term. He hasn't finished one year. The country is doing badly, not in dispute. But that doesn't mean that he's going to be a constant. I keep hearing people saying, you know, this is going to get worse. I'm like, no. Every president who's taken over a country has had a terrible first one, one and a half, two years. And then he picks off. That is most probably what's going to happen to Ruto. But even if it doesn't, we're not going to destroy this country because he, because the country is not moving the way we want it for the first 11 months. He has just gotten his first budget. Before, he was operating on the budget that he found. Why don't we let, why don't we just wait? I keep hearing people say, no, we can't wait. What do you mean we can't wait? What are you going to do instead of waiting? Are you going to destroy Kenya so, because you don't want to wait? Because what are you going to do if you don't want to wait for Ruto to get his act together? What? Stop the country. Destroy the country. Destroy our institutions. This is my problem. So I think we need to be honest with ourselves and we need to be honest with each other. And we certainly need to be honest to the leadership of the Azimio coalition. What you're doing is wrong. You're scaring children. Right? It's no longer about politics. Now you want to shake the very foundation of our nation. You want, a, you want your testing the bones of our nation states. I mean, anybody who has an, a simple understanding of politics knows what Azimio wants to do. They are hoping they can build a momentum, an anti-government momentum based on the living standard. But we know we are having a, a bumper harvest of maize. So in another month or so, unga prices are going to come down. Whether it is, this is, we can say this is an intervention by government, or it is an act of God, or it's farmers, but in a few months, unga prices are going to come down. Right? And I think part of the reason why Raila is in such a hurry is because he knows if he waits a month or two, prices are going to change. Things are going to settle down. He wants to, he wants to ride on the current stress and strain that the country is going through. And unfortunately, he's not doing this for us. I've always told people who are with Azimio, based on what I saw in 2019, one day they will wake up to go to the demonstrations on the streets. Raila will not be there. Raila will be on the corridors or on the steps of Harambe House shaking hands with William Ruto. And after he shakes hands, the baby Pendo who died somewhere in Kisumu, or the people who got beaten up by policemen, are not going to come back. So let's be selfish. This country belongs to all of us. Raila has his own interest that he's pursuing. And I assure you, it's not about the lowering the standard of living. He wants to be in a position to influence the decisions that are made by William Ruto. He wants to be able to tell William Ruto, appoint these two people for me. Give me two ambassadors. Give me this kind of business. Protect my business. That is what he's negotiating for. And we need to be honest. He's pushing the rest of us into his fight for his interests. And it's hurting all of us. So I want to be the first person to call him out. Raila Molo Dinga, you really need to stop what you're doing. And if it means we're going to start having rallies in this country against Raila Odinga, that's what we're going to do. But he has to stop. Look for another way to agitate. Look for another way to do what you need to do. But you're not going to destroy our country. You're not going to split this baby into two.
to make you happy. Thank you very much.